So if you want to learn your first job as a React developer and you have your first React interview coming up right in the corner, in this video, I'm going to go through how to properly prepare for a React interview and what you would expect in a React job interview. Because in this video, I'm going to go through what are the best practices as a React developer and what you should expect in a React interview. Also, I'm going to give you like what are the tips and what things that are going to come up in the interview that you should keep an eye on and actually learn before going into that interview with an interviewer. So the first one and the most important one is GSX and every bit about it. So if you're a React developer, I know you're already probably familiar with GSX, you already worked with GSX, rendered stuff, wrote in applications and stuff. But as a newbie developer, have you ever thought why GSX is that important or why a lot of interviewers actually ask about GSX a lot of questions? Simply because GSX is actually the heart of React. So without GSX, you can't pretty much do anything. It actually allows you to render literally anything and it kind of like incorporates what we already know in HTML word and allow us to use all these HTML tags and everything we can do in HTML, but in JavaScript, and particularly we can manipulate it using the JavaScript stuff. And this makes it super powerful and super important to react. In fact, this is actually one of the main features why react is so popular and so loved. So definitely when you go to interview, you should expect that they are going to talk about a lot of GSX, they're going to ask you a lot of questions about GSX, how it works, how we do conditional rendering, how do you want to properly split GSX for cleaner code into like multiple components and reuse them and literally everything concerning GSX. The second one a state in react. I literally cannot imagine like a react interview won't have questions or coding challenges or anything regarding state. It has to include state at some point because literally state is super important react it's actually one of the fundamental stuff about react. And you should have a really good grasp on you should be able to work with state know how to manage state to create state and update state properly. And particularly all of those in functional components because now class components are dead don't need to go into class components components and learn all of those. I know there's like so many projects that still use class component at some point, but only focus on, on functional component for like 99% of the time. So you literally need to know everything about state you need to create like a lot of applications, a lot of projects, and you want to use the state to manage the GSX because this is one of the most important stuff is actually using the state to do conditional rendering and actually rendering GSX like a part of GSX when something happens and the other part when the other thing happens, and so on and so forth. I mean, if you fail to go through this like state question, and actually answering the interviewer questions regarding state properly, yeah, just, just don't bother yourself going into the interview. Again, it's very important. And the third one is re renders and reconciliation. So basically, re renders is actually what allows React to update data on the screen and what it displays on the screen when the state actually changes. So, for example, if you try to like fetch some API and you gotta like wanna fetch some data, like a products data, and you have like an e commerce shop. So, when you fetch this data from the API later on, when the data is ready and you have the data on your JavaScript and your code, when you update exactly the state on your React, that's actually what's gonna happen. It's gonna re render the part of the GSX that it needs to that like, you know, has a relation with that data, and only that part. So you're just going to render re render that part for you to display the new like fetched products and everything. And for reconciliation is actually the technique that allows react to determine whether that part of the GSX needs to be re rendered or not. So you can imagine it's like an algorithm like a different algorithm to tell, Oh, this part of GSX has relation with the state that just updated, Oh, I want to just go ahead and update that one, which means react obviously doesn't need to re render the whole application for performance purposes. And this again is one another algorithm that I see a lot in interviews and I've been through myself on my interview and I got this and asked like why reconciliation is how does it work and why it's super important for react. The fourth one is react versus all the frameworks like Vue, angular or solid or filled. So like answering this question basically allows your gives the interviewer the sense that Oh, this kind of guy that you are actually aware of the good like pros and cons of react. And this also make him understand why you chose react compared to other framework like angular. So you clearly want to know what are the pros and cons of react, why you chose react and why react is very good compared to other framework. Like for example, react has a virtual DOM, which others don't have react is super performant and react is just like a library. Also, it's something like declarative and it has like a bunch of large component sets on npm that you can install and reuse. So knowing all these 
small, teeny, tiny details actually makes it super important for the interviewer to know, oh, this guy is definitely familiar with React and he loves working and using React. Now, the fifth one is REST APIs and events. Look, there is no React application out there that doesn't interact with APIs in one way or another. So APIs are actually a pretty crucial point for you to learn as a developer. It's actually in general, it's not only for React, for JavaScript or for any other framework. REST APIs is actually what allow you to exchange data between like a server and the browser. And we're talking about the browser, obviously it's gonna be a React application. So we're gonna be able to exchange the data, like fetch the data from a, like a server, like fetching products for e-commerce shop, or we wanna have like a register and login. So we wanna sign up the new user and wanna send the data of the new user to the server to save it to the database and everything. And all of these actually work using the RESTful API. So you literally wanna go through all the details about RESTful APIs, how you can use hooks to utilize this and actually work with RESTful APIs like the use effects and all the libraries that allows you to do that and interact with like an HTTP based server, as well as like events, they actually have a really strong correlation with REST APIs because most of the times, like 99% of the times, you wanna like invoke and send like an API or HTTP request when a particular event happens, like when the user clicks on, on particularly like a button or when the user submit a form. So you wanna know exactly how events actually work with SP APIs, how events are actually invoked, how they are bubbled and how they work work particularly in React. You also want to know like how events are actually are wrapped by React and the synthetic events and how the synthetic events wrapper basically works in React as well. The sixth one is global state and global stores. So there's like 90% of projects and companies out there, 90% of them use global state and global stores in one way or another. And for the majority of the part and the most famous library or global state management library is Redux. So in my opinion, before going into an interview, make sure to install Redux, know how to configure Redux, know how a store or a global store actually works, particularly in React with like updating the state, doing re-renders, reconciliation, and everything about that global state and how it actually interacts with React. It might seem a little bit kind of ugly and hard at first, but once you're actually installing a project, work on a small project, try to manage a couple states here and there, doing account counter button or register form or something, you will better understand that. And a lot of interviewers actually focus on this point, particularly on a Redux point, because there's many, like so many developers out there actually fail to explain clearly and concisely how Redux works, how a global store works in React, and how does it interact with the React component. And for the seventh one is React up bundling and deployment. So if you ever get asked like why we need to bundle React, the easiest answer would be because like the browser Browsers can't understand and read or execute the React. We have to bundle it so the browser can actually clearly understand that code. But wait a sec, do you know how a bundle actually works? Do you know how bundling generally works in the browser? Yes, it's super important to know what bundling is, how does it work, and particularly there's so many famous bundles out there like Webpack, Parcel, and recently there's this V bundle in which like everyone and every new tool or framework out there is actually using these Vs. And yes, it's worth your time. So for me, like 90% of the time is going to find a lot of legacy projects out there and very big projects when you join in companies, most of them use Webpack. And in fact, Webpack is actually a pretty interesting bundler in general because it gives you super easy to a super advanced kind of topics and features, as well as actually allows you to configure everything from the bundle name or your application name to what you export into all the loaders. I know it might seem a little bit hard for you to understand what I'm saying, but if you go in and look at bundling and how Webpack actually bundles your React applications, how does it merge? And yes, believe me, this will allow you to understand a lot more concepts that you can actually imagine in web development in general. And the last step is, is you want to learn how to properly talk and actually explain in an interview. In my opinion, one of the best ways actually to learn like getting into a conversation and explaining techie stuff into another guy like an interviewer is by watching YouTube tutorials. Yes, you're hearing me right. Like by watching YouTube tutorials and other instructors, like for example, Coder One or any other instructor out there, actually explain a technology, for example, explain React, particularly explain React or JavaScript or anything in general. And you just want to mimic how they actually explain the code or how they explain the concept. Yes, this is actually very underestimated. And a lot of people actually, they have the knowledge, a lot of like interviewees actually have the skills, have the knowledge, they know React, they work with React, they build projects. When it comes to the interview, they actually stumble upon this really huge big wall and make sure you sound confident. I hope that you can actually land your first job and ace your interview using those tips.